-hmm. Can you do your Diana impression for us? Hello, Mother. How are you today? <laughs> and I did this. Oh, yes. She likes to fight. <laughs> That's right. And kick. And fight. And kick. Anomaly. I am an anomaly. Anomaly. I am an anomaly. Hey. Oh, Hi, an anomaly. 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 Something that deviates from what is standard, normal, or expected. An oddity, peculiarity, irregularity, inconsistency, incongruity, a rarity. <laughs> Live. Hello, this is Angela. This is Jen. <laughs> we should probably do a thing. We should. I don't have a thing. Um, Can I do it? You want to do one? Oh. Mm -mm. What would you say? You don't have to watch Anna. <laughs> hey, Laura. Give us just a second. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Anomaly Podcast. My name is Angela and I've got a mini Diana in my house and I am an anomaly. Hi, I'm Jen and I've been binge watching Friends and TNG while working and I am an anomaly. Welcome to the podcast, people. That's definitely something I've done as well. <laughs> Netflix likes to ask me, are you still watching this? And I'm like, yes, Netflix, stop, stop judging, judging me. me. What I do love is that Amazon Prime because some of my shows that I watched for a while on Netflix are now no longer on Netflix. They're now on Amazon Prime. I hate that. And, well, some of them you can only get by paying, which is annoying, but I don't care. And then some of them are just on Amazon Prime. The cool part about Prime is that they go a few more episodes before they ask you if you're oh, still watching. Oh, okay, that's good. Because I think Netflix has like a three to four episode yeah, limit. Yeah, and even if it's short episodes to long episodes, because it feels like it lets you go longer when it's the hour-long show yeah. or whatever. But anyway, Amazon Prime lets you stream a little bit longer, a little less judgmental about your binge watching. <laughs> yeah, Netflix is a bit pretentious. Indeed. It's getting that way. I feel like it's judging me. <laughs> it's judging. For sure. Silently judging you. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing silent about it. You may hear a little Lorelai in the background. Yes. That's Angela's three-year-old daughter. She's adorable. Just picture baby Diana from Wonder Woman, and that will be yeah. Lorelai. Except she has like a what hazel hazel blue eyes she has blue eyes i know she does. like blue gray blue gray yeah, yeah she, we're best friends now yeah she is now best friends with jen no she has <laughs> she has good friends she's at her always school. liked me since she was a baby but i think it's been a while since we got together last it's that's true we skipped a month sorry guys i know life, thank you life has happened we just did this a minute ago because I forgot to push record. Yeah, I'm having deja vu. Yeah, I, me too. But um, we've been thinking about what we're going to do with Anomaly. Um, as some of you longtime listeners know, we've been doing this for over a decade, about almost 12 years now. Yep. And when we first started Anomaly, Anomalies were women who were geeks, and that was rare. Yeah, like or it was women rare for geeks, people to talk about it. Women podcasters and geeks were a rare thing, so we right. called ourselves anomalies. Well, that's not so rare anymore. It is not so <laughs> rare anymore. So we're trying to think of what anomaly is today. We've been working on rebranding the show and yes. thinking of what where what our new direction is. And um, we will probably be polling you guys for your ideas mm -hmm. on, on our next year. But we, we kind of have an idea. One of the things Jen said in take one <laughs> was <laughs> that we, we feel like the shows we've done that have resonated the most when we have gone into not just how we uh, review something, what we think of it, but also what we feel about it, how it affected us. And then what does this particular show or episode say about a issue that's going on today or something that may be going on personally for a person? And I think that all of us that enjoy genre TV, books, movies, all of those things, I think we've all had personal epiphanies yeah, and maybe global epiphanies that we can, that we can link to something that we saw. I remember the show they did on the History Channel where they talked about all of these inventions that happen because of Star Trek, right? Not just physical inventions, but also kind of spiritual awakenings or, you know, epiphanies about yourself, things like that, that I think are, are things we like to talk about. 
and I think our listeners really like to talk yeah. about and like to hear about. And we really are thinking that that direction is going to be more interesting and more fun for us because that's what we end up doing anyway. The one thing that's kind of scary about it, though, is that if we go in this direction, you may hear more opinions, more opinions about the world uh, from us than you're used to hearing, which... Has, it's kind of sc- scary. It's for scary. Us. It's so scary. We tend to stay away from politics, even in you know, in if, <laughs> even our friendship. We both have differing views. Um, we don't stay away from politics. We talk, yeah, definitely, because <laughs> because we can have that conversation without hating one another. Yeah. But on the interwebs, yes. that is not so much the case. No, a lot of hate gets thrown away <laughs> yes, around that's if true. you don't like believe in one thing. Right, you're pounced on. So we're kind of afraid of that, but at the same time, reality is wrapped in fiction to, to yes. present an idea. Science fiction has always done that from Star Trek to Star Wars to everything, you know, Battlestar, Battlestar they wrap ideas in Some fiction. are better at it than others. Exactly. So <laughs> we're going to be examining that and trying to analyze what the writers and directors were trying right. to say and things. And, and it's not always going to be about that, I don't think. But right. But not just global realities, but personal realities as well. We talked a little bit about an episode that did really well uh, that we did with our friends Sith Jen and Stephanie about our raid group situation and how we had kind of come to the conclusion that our friendship was a real life raid (laughs) group and if you look around everyone is everyone is everyone can be classified which I mean obviously you don't want to put people in categories but we kind of all drift towards things that fit us and you can sometimes you know whether it's basketball or wow or D D or an office you can kind of say oh that person that the person's tank. the tank and that group. person is you know this person is the rogue or whatever also we jokingly talked about how we have all four houses of hogwarts yeah. in our family and we have four people in four houses you know I think everyone who likes this type of stuff has had that experience and that it would be fun to match those experiences, to talk about what, how we feel about it, and then also hear what you guys think. And so instead of just saying, oh, here's a review of Star Wars, you know, we talk about um, the implications of, you know, the father-son relationship or something like that. I'm not saying that's going to be a topic, but that's the type of thing we're talking about. We're going to always try to dig deeper because it's kind of what we try to do anyway. It does always end up that way, but I think we stop ourselves because of that kind of fear factor. Because we don't want to insult anyone. Yeah, we don't want to insult anyone or hurt anyone or each other. We didn't want to sensationalize the show at all. But I think that us being truer to who we are, and not saying that we haven't been true, we've been no, very we've been like ourselves. ourselves. This yeah. is what you get when you meet us. Yeah, this is what you, this is, and you can ask Rico. <laughs> yeah, Rico knows, our friend Rico from it's Texas. Like, are you guys Ever. really, yeah, we yeah, are. This is what you this get. This is what you get. This is us. But we definitely hold back a little bit, like anyone does. And so I think it'll be interesting to see where this goes. If I may, I had a little, <laughs> <laughs> no touchy. Lorelai, <laughs> Miss Ma'am, come on. Lore. <laughs> Do you want to go up to your room? No. Be cool, man. This be is cool, reality, cool. baby. It's okay. Anywho, she almost stopped the podcast. This is our reality. Yeah, this is our reality. <laughs> Talk about our reality. <laughs> hey, oh, now she's her. You guys, do not be fooled by that. Is <laughs> uh, is crocodile tears? Oh, oh. Uh, hold on. Okay, we're back. Uh, Jim got a new Kindle. Mm-hmm. And one of the books that randomly came on the Kindle, like preloaded, was Harry Potter and Half Blood Prince. Yeah. Book six. And spoiler alert stuff happens. Stuff happens. And one of the things, one of the things that happens at the end of the book is that it turns out that one of the nemesis of Harry, Draco, ends up kind of being okay. Like he's not like a big hero or anything, but he ends up not being completely a villain and i had an epiphany the other day talking to jim about it we were talking about what happens at the end of half-blood prince which if you haven't watched it fast forward about three minutes passes at the end of half-blood prince voldemort wants draco to kill dumbledore and has asked him to do this you find out later that snape and dumbledore basically have figured this out and have decided that there's not really a way they can get around Dumbledore dying 
but that Snape needs to do it so that Draco won't. That's something you can't come back from. And we were just thinking about like uh, Dumbledore and Snape putting Draco's needs first and that Voldemort obviously is just trying to darken Draco to bring him further to his side. And then at the end of the day, Narcissa and Lucius, the reason they get kind of excommunicated from Voldemort's army, they actually get shunned. And the reason is because they chose Draco over over the, Voldemort. Yeah. And I it dawned on me that what is the theme that's the whole series? Love. Not just love, but parents' love for children. Right. A parent's love for a child is the overarching theme. And that even in the mini story of Draco, Lucius, and Narcissa, that is something that wins. Even in this dark situation, their love for Draco is more important than their loyalty to Voldemort. And that saves them in the end. Like, of course, I knew that that happened, but it didn't like occur to me that that fit the theme of the whole, you know, the whole series so right. freaking well. I don't know. Like, I just had like a moment <laughs> about it. I was, I think it was even like the morning and we were like brushing our teeth talking about it. And I was like crying. <laughs> I was, like, it's because they love him so much. <laughs> But it's stuff like that that I think is really interesting and that stuff you can get into and and Dissect, examine yeah. that you don't normally get to in just a review. Right. Right? So that's just kind of an example. You and I hadn't talked about that Not yet. Not really. We've covered right. Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone way back when. <laughs> but <laughs> I don't think at that movies, time we right? had children. <laughs> Have you seen all the movies? Yeah. Okay, course. I was just making sure. Yeah, I've read most I've, of them. Too. I figured that you had, because yeah. I remember you hadn't necessarily read the books, and so I remember that was kind of mm -hmm. part of our conversation, because mm -hmm. that's the only time in our whole lives you have not read a book that I have read <laughs> that will ever happen. <laughs> so, um, I go pee -pee. oh, okay. please do. Carry oh on, God. sister. There she goes. All righty. <laughs> hey, you. <laughs> that's my kid. That will be on the interwebs forever. <laughs> I'm going to play that clip at her graduation. <laughs> anyway, so you know what I'm talking yeah. about? That's a theme. Even though you you know that Rowling borrowed and yeah. was inspired by Everybody things. Does. Everybody does. Yeah. I think that the tightness of the themes that she brings is really cool. And I mean, there's definitely other movies examples, and shows yeah. and examples like that, not just in Harry Potter, but in the other things we talk about. So that's the kind of stuff that I'm thinking about. Right. So what do you have an example of something that you've thought of? I don't know if we mentioned this in our take one or our take two, but okay. we've been fearful of like talking about politics in our episode mm -hmm. um, because we don't want haters hating on. Yeah, it. we don't we want, want people to trolls. like us. But you know what? You know, yep. you and I is all that matters. You know what we think of each other and how we're able that's to true. communicate. Sometimes the internet is good, and sometimes it's a black hole of suckage. <laughs> that is <laughs> a know? really good way to and describe it. People just attack because you don't think the same way they don't want to listen and trade ideas no and it's just like well you don't believe what i believe so therefore you are xyz but i think that there are examples that we can pull from books like 1984 or even television shows like battlestar galactica and examples that could be measured against reality <laughs> that's going on right now we've always wanted to talk about all the different theories about the um, representations of different political ideologies represented in Star, in Star Trek. Trek. Yeah. And starting from like the 60s and then what it was in that climate and then how it changed in the 80s and all that. And that's a huge topic. And that's an interesting topic. Yeah. And that's something we've never covered. We wanted to cover, but we've never felt like we could if we ever presented an idea like that it would always be balanced where we'd sure. have people with differing views on the show to discuss yes, it together and that's and another not just thing a one-sided viewpoint yeah just so that we can always have differing ideas to well and that's other part up. too is that moving forward we also want to talk about maybe even getting experts on the show or other people who have had similar similar types of shows and things like that so that we can get even more perspectives, not just us and our friends, but also, well, definitely us and our friends. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> They're easy resources. <laughs> but but getting even more people who maybe even know actually what they're talking about, that kind of thing. Not that we don't, but, or even getting children 
that's another thing we definitely don't hide the fact that we're mothers, nope. but it's not something that we talk through very often. No. We don't make that like, we're the mom's podcast. It's a sidebar. <laughs> it's a side- and we right. don't make that a focus. Of yeah, we just that just isn't who we yeah. are. I mean, it is, but it isn't. It is. So, it's a part of us, but that's not what this show is about. Right. Anyway, that that's the kind of stuff moving forward that I think would be really cool. And the other thing is, is I think we've been keeping a huge secret for a really long time. And that secret is, is that Jen and I do not agree on a lot of stuff. We do, but we don't. And we have managed to remain friends. Always. Yeah. Which and is kind of rare if you look at yeah. the way things are on <laughs> line and and in current yes. life situation well and i think that one of the other things i remember you brought up when we were having this conversation uh-huh. is just that on a bigger stage having the two of us be an example of two people who can have a civil conversation. have a civil conversation and not be angry or bitter passionate but yeah. not necessarily mean and be able to walk away and still be cool so i think bringing that to the table is also super important because it's, isn't it crazy how that sounds super scary? Like that sounds like right before you get on one of those rides at the, (laughs) at the fair and you're not really sure they've been tested. Right. And you're like, I'm sure I'll be fine. (laughs) I mean, it's fine. I've seen like seven or eight people go (laughs) and like there's rounds have gone and it's fine. A couple of people have died. No, no one's died, but, but it just sounds weird. And so it's like so scary that you're, (laughs) <laughs> stomach is all turned up but at the same time you're like you know i'm gonna get on there i'm gonna do it lore I'm just yeah Careful. you know better I'm just how does it look beautiful. <laughs> it's beautiful. so glad <laughs> anyway though we know a lot of listeners who yep. listen to this show are intellectual and they're welcoming of other ideas and very you know, zen about things. Sure. <laughs> you know, we can have rational conversations on fa- our Facebook group without huge blow ups. It happens. Yep. We have debates sometimes and it's always remained civil, but there's a large number of people listening that we don't know. Right. And maybe new listeners. I think the thing that makes us nervous, Angela, mm-hmm. is the fact that the current state of geekdom <laughs> Right. Seems to be degrading. This is important. And this is one of the things we've been thinking about as far as rebranding who we are. Right. You know, what anomaly is. What? Don't shoot Jen. Yeah, you always shoot bad guys. (laughs) I'm a good guy. Go shoot bad guys. I'm not shooting her. Oh, good. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for not shooting me. (laughs) Appreciate that. Can you go shoot bad guys over there? Yeah. Okay. Society in general. Yep. Is super critical, super judgmental. And I mean, it's their, their way, way or the highway. Or the highway. Yeah. We have recently heard a lot about a subset of Star Wars fans that we don't necessarily agree with. And I think the majority of fans don't agree with them who are um, loud. loud and get a lot of attention and make some of the actors who were super excited originally to be a part of the Star Wars family property and family second guess their decision <laughs> to be a part of it. Uh, run them off of social media. Yep. We love what we love and we're not going to denigrate no these well, things. Well, and the these- thing is too is that even us, I mean, we do like our worst of track. Oh yes, please and we, we do, have opinions. We do worst of track and we definitely um one of my favorite uh Star Wars that we did was the Anakin's a creepy creeper. Oh yeah, the creeper creeper. But this is the thing is that we're allowed to have our opinions and they're allowed to be negative. But I'm not going to go somewhere specifically to tell Hayden Christensen to go die in a ditch. Like, that's not how I treat people. It has nothing to do with them. Even when you hear our reviews about it, I never talk about the actors. I know that those are decisions that are made by directors and writers. And that is the people. Any any person that thought it was a good idea to haze a small child for being oh. in episode one, yeah. shame on you. Shame on you. That has nothing to do with him. And that is like the thing that we want to separate ourselves from. And that yes. even happened. That even happened long before we even began the podcast. And it started kind of this thing because 
I'm not going to pretend that I loved those three movies because I didn't. And I'm going to talk about that. But there's a difference between giving my honest opinion about something that I wasn't that big of a fan of and being abusive. Yeah. Those are two totally different things. And we can have honest opinions without being abusive jerks. I, we still haven't really decided, I don't think. We haven't, haven't really formulated not exactly. a solid idea of what an anomaly is. But I think we both agree... I think anomaly is the new term for people who aren't those people. <laughs> you right. know what well, I mean? And I think that also anomaly has always been yeah. this idea, not just about being a girl, like even though that right. definitely became a huge that was, part of that it. That was a start. That was the start point. of it. Anomaly was more about how we don't have to subscribe to being a certain way or fit into a certain like box that you decide what a geek is, whether it's a girl or a guy or whoever. And whether somebody is... 14 or 8 or 45 you don't get to decide what that person is or looks like or whatever i think it is just about us kind of reclaiming who we are and that is what an anomaly is yeah. is you get to claim you get to geek how you want to and no one gets to decide i mean we're still gonna judge you <laughs> <laughs> silently and i'm respectfully. kidding respectfully respectfully we'll judge you <laughs> on the things we won't run you off and i'm still social gonna media again platforms. like i'll call out things that are not to my liking. Right. But that is not the same. It's not the same as being abusive. So I agree. I just think that people have gotten to the point where they've made everything personal. Yes. It's, everything yes. is this guy is falling. You yes. Know, you've raped lots my of childhood. chicken little lots yeah, of chicken littles thing. running around. There's too much drama, people. <laughs> Calm it down. <laughs> so I've kind of come around to the idea that I really think that Rogue One is probably one of my top three Star Wars movies. Yeah. And that's something you and I do not agree on. No. Because you're not a fan. Mm -mm. It's not because it wasn't a good movie. It's like one of the best Star Wars movies ever. It was a good it's movie. It's like really good. But I judge a movie as being the best for its rewatch ability. Uh, yeah. I love me some Lord of the Rings and I can watch them once a month, once a right. week. Right. They're running in the background as yeah. I'm cleaning my house. Yes. Of I course they are. I love them. They're really good. And I can't do that with Rogue One because it's so depressing but it's not depressing Spoiler alert everyone dies everyone dies <laughs> it's like titanic people i can't i just but can't like literally it's no one emotional. survives <laughs> it's too emotional for me <laughs> but, but it's know, awesome it is but a you great know what's movie. awesome about it though what? is that <laughs> all of the deaths mean something they, they every mean, single okay, death do, has meaning yeah it's mm -hmm. so good <laughs> But that's the point is that it's not reality. It's Star Wars. And in this particular movie, I'm just yanking your chain. That's why I brought it up because I know that we don't agree about it. I feel very passionately that it's a really good movie and a really good Star Wars movie. I agree. And I don't think Han Solo was that bad. I agree. And we already said that if you want to listen to our review on the Han Solo uh, movie, mm -hmm. it's the episode right before this <laughs> that we did. We released in June. We did. So we, we gave it two thumbs up. We did. Because there's two of us. That movie received undue criticism. I agree. Because, I don't know, Disney stinks at... You know what? It, or In this particular case, Disney did not do a, well, a good job of marketing it. I don't think they knew what they had. No. I think that was the problem, is that they didn't know what they wanted it to be. Mm -hmm. And so then they were like, oh, well, we'll just let some artists do something with it. And then they realized what the artist was going to do, the directors or whoever they were. They were like, oh, no, that's not what we wanted at all. But it was like too late yeah. in the game. And so then they were like, well, let's just like quietly put it out and maybe no one will notice it. And then even though it wasn't that bad and people really weren't complaining about it, like I've seen complainers complain and that was not complain. Nobody was complaining about it, like in the grand scheme of things. And then after all of that, like being quiet about it and not marketing it, they're like, oh, we had this terrible opening weekend. And it was like, nope. Shit, Sherlock. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you had a terrible opening weekend. You didn't freaking market it. What the heck? What is your problem? This like, is you what can't, happens. Like, when this you is what happens when you don't believe in something. <laughs> and is it among the greatest movies or even among no. the greatest Star Wars movies? No. But it's not among the worst. It's not bad. By any means. Oh my gosh, it's so much better than The Phantom Menace, Attack of the Clones, and Oof. Revenge of the Sith. And I can watch those. Sure. Even though I don't like them the best, I can rewatch those. And Solo I... was definitely better than that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. And yeah. 
there's some fun parts. There's good parts. But this is what we're talking about when it comes to fandom and how we want to separate ourselves from those people. <laughs> oh, be because nice, those, some of those people, and there may be a few of you in the audience, and I'm not singling you out. I'm talking about the greater group of people who mob. may not have actually seen the movie, but have an opinion about how it stinks. <laughs> and they want to tell you all about it every time you post a comment about what you liked about the movie. They yeah. have to jump in there and tell you why it sucks. Why? I'm not a fan of the Transformers movies. I loved the Transformer cartoons as a little girl. Yep. I do not particularly care for any of the movies, but I don't make it a point to jump on someone else's post and tell everyone how they suck. Or no, why they suck, or why they ruined my childhood. I agree childhood. with you on the Transformers movies. We've been very <laughs> silent on Transformers. Because we nothing because them. Because we nothing them. If you don't like something, you just, just ignore leave it. it. Why expend why any energy on something you don't like? Right. Like, we aren't particularly fans of Doctor Who. I know there's a lot of you who love Doctor Who. And for a while, we had a sister show called Anomaly Supplemental who covered Doctor Who. Sure, and because we're we fine didn't with that. want to. Yeah. But we don't spend our energy talking about how we don't like it right and i don't even really not like it i just it just didn't it doesn't click with us just didn't click it with just me. not does not trip the, any sort of trigger at all yeah why did you make that face because my daughter <laughs> oh i thought you were making a face because no, i'm I not said making some sort of no 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 no, no. <laughs> i wasn't aware of she's just being really loud oh it's fine don't worry about her and she's this adorable. is our reality this is our reality. if you are listening to anomaly for the first time you can go back and listen to all the archived episodes on our website dating all the way back to like 2005 and 6 where you will hear children the evolution of our lives where we Eventually had children and babies and all that. And all you will hear this a lot. This is <laughs> this is anomaly. This is anomaly. That's true. It's probably your reality too. I bet many of that you have might children. be part of your reality. Yeah. That's true. I turned forty two this week. Happy so day. thank you. And I watched Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. <laughs> I mean, I've read the books uh -huh. and. The movie's sort of silly. I mean, the books are silly. It's a whole silly... Have you ever read them? I have. They're fun, and it, they're just nonsense. They're everywhere. They're everywhere. And uh, Douglas Adams will admit to that. Yeah, he didn't There was no them. rhyme or reason. I think he literally just sat in a started room... Started writing. And started writing, yeah. and there was not, like, any editing or anything like... I mean, I'm sure there was some editing, but... No clear direction. No, no clear words. direction, but it was... It's kind of fun. Mm -hmm. It's kind of fun that way. And it's always fun to watch... That even in movies like that, though, uh, or even in fiction that's kind of nonsensical, it's fun. And there's still something to be learned. There's something to be taken from it. And I do, the towel situation is hilarious. You always need your towel. Which, I mean, the argument for a towel is actually very solid. <laughs> Always having a towel with you. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Cracks me up. So anyway. Yeah, you're t you turned 42. I, at the end of this month, will be 44. I think that should be an episode also. The how old we are? No, not how old we are, but the astral, uh, what do you call it? The astrology. Oh, yes. Because we've had a, an episode on what personality type you are yes. and how that relates to characters in television. And That's that might be an interesting true. one to do as, um, astro what do you call it? Astrology oh, science. yeah, yeah. Well, because you, well, it's a big, you're not it even figures on the big in, It figures big into Battlestar, too. It does. It does yeah. figure big into Battlestar. You're right. It does figure into Battlestar. Out of there. <laughs> Lore. <laughs> Lore Lyalia, do you want to go upstairs? No. Okay. <sighs> I'm sorry I'm so mean. I'm not really a mean person. She's fine. I'm loving, She's but just firm. talking. Just being. She's so. in a clo in that closet trying to play with stuff she doesn't need to touch. That's what she does. Yeah, look at her. Yeah. <laughs> did you start a new school? You did. You're being nice to your new friends. I'm so glad. Do your new friends like Princess Leia? They do. Do you like Princess Leia? You want to come talk? About you want to talk Leia? in the microphone and talk about Princess Leia? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Come here. You can talk. Okay. You just talk. Talk about Princess Leia. Why is she your favorite? She's my favorite. What do you like about her? I like her. Is she smart? Yeah. What is she? Is she smart? She's smart song and beautiful. Say it again in the she, microphone. She's smart and beautiful? Yeah. Strong, yeah. smart, and beautiful. Strong, smart, and beautiful. 
just like you. Uh-huh. Did you have Leah buns when we came when I came over? Uh-huh. Do you uh-huh. like your Leah buns? Uh-huh. Can you do your Diana impression for us? Hello, mother. How are you today? <laughs> and I did this. Oh, yes. She likes to fight. <laughs> That's right. And kick. And fight. And kick. We, this is not a video podcast, but we can describe it. You can do it. Okay. She's that was good. bowing out. She's bowing out. Oh, kick. She's doing Oh, and man. we're fighting. We're kicking. Okay. We're kick. <laughs> oh. That's right. <laughs> oh, oh, force push. Force push. Excellent, my dear. Thank you. <laughs> ah, I love it. All right, I digress. Um, Outtakes. Force push. Oh. Oh. You got me. Love it. Do you want to? Do you want to do a short episode push mini skirt about the Picard episode? Yeah. Well, do we know very much about it, or no? Just the. Just the thought I'm gonna, about I'm it. Come to your house. You can come to my house. I Maybe another that. day. We have to go night night soon. Yeah. Yeah. I can go night night. Jen has to go home and go night night. Mm hmm. That's true. Mm hmm. When, when Jen comes back, she can come back to our home. Yeah, she, she can come back to our home and visit. And go back to I will bring night. Aaron next time. Yes. You can see Aaron. You can see Aaron. Okay. And see me. Yes, he would yes. like to see you. Yes. All right. Hey, Lorelai, go tell Bubba he needs to take a bath. Um, I just wanted to give a shout out to the individual that I met at the San Marcos Activity oh, Center. Oh, that's right. He's a new listener. Yeah. Uh, it's so funny to meet an anomaly listener in the wild, Angela. I know. That Especially is very cool. Especially when you're not wearing makeup, your hair's a mess, and you're pumping iron. Someone goes, I know you. You know, as much as that's cool. <laughs> you're like, oh, how do you know me? You want to say something? Yes, but the funny thing is, is that as awesome as it was that someone talked to you, I have a very strict no talking policy at the gym. But that is so nice. That. It was so nice. I have a story. I'm just scared you. of people talking to me. And That's also, it's usually when thing. I'm running and I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> well, he and his wife are cool. I like, oh, I, I thought good. they were very sweet. They That's, were nice. That's nice. And That's I was nice. glad to talk to them. I'm glad he, he told me that I, he found us. So I'm excited about this new direction. I'm excited to hear what you guys have to say. Yeah, yeah I'm excited to see what happens mm-hmm. in the future and see yeah. what we can do. So we're even talking about doing seasons now yes. of Anomaly. And if there's anybody listening who is a sound editor, <laughs> Angela and I need some help <laughs> because it's a lot of work to edit the show. Not only record the shows, but mm-hmm. to edit them ourselves, mm-hmm. which is why there's been few and far between. So if yep. there's anyone out there who's like a professional at this and you'd like to help out, yep. um, email us and give us, tell us about your background and maybe we can pricing. work together. Yeah, and pricing all and all stuff. that stuff. <laughs> so anyway, if you would like to listen to any of our past episodes, you can head over to anomalypodcast.com. That's A-N-O-M-A-L-Y podcast.com. And there you can find um, our subscription link where you can subscribe to our podcast. You can find us everywhere, but if you're just, if you're new to podcasts, subscribe through Apple Podcasts or through Google Podcasts. Mm -hmm. And then there are all like Shoutcast or whatever. There's Stitcher. There's all kinds of places we ended up. Because again, we've been doing this for a long time. So we're everywhere. So, um, but you can easily find all of those places at anomalypodcast.com and click on subscribe. If you have any questions or comments or feedback, you can contact us through our website on our contact page, or you can email us directly at girlygeeks at gmail.com. That's girlygeeks with a Z at gmail.com or call our voicemail line at 432-363-4742. I'm sorry to say that we are not keeping up with Twitter. We do post things on Pinterest, but I did, we just can't do all the things. <laughs> yeah, we're on Facebook, though. Yeah, but we're on Facebook. And That's a very Instagram? active group, Facebook group. Are we still um, on Instagram? I uh, know. Okay. But um, face, our Facebook group is very active. Yeah, the Facebook stuff and is. And we, pin- we do Pinterest quite a bit, mm-hmm. so check those places out. Yep. Thank you for listening. I'm Jen. And I'm Angela. And you've been listening to the Anomaly Podcast, where female and fandom converge. <laughs> for now. <laughs> Yeah, until we come up with a better tagline. (laughs) Because that'll be changing. I like that. (laughs) Thank you.
on. Are we rolling? Did we yeah. record that? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Gamma Quadrant Golf Clap. <laughs>